David, it's good to have you back to our conversations on God. Thank you. As opposed to not conversations with God, that's copy copywritten. Is that copywritten? They can't copyright that. Come on. It's a Neil Donald Walsh. He <laughs> wrote books called that. Uh, last time we talked about the heart, head, hands method, and you're not really a method, but really a blueprint for being a human. And it's really, we talked about it being uh, heart centered and keeping track of your frequency. And my question for you is, why why is it so hard to keep our attention on these things, which tension drawn to, to things such as this helps our frequency stay higher, aka it feels better. Why is it so hard? It seems like like a natural impulse to to go dark or get frustrated or desire something else than what is here. What why do you think it's so hard? I don't know. Is it just me? I don't know. <laughs> All right, that's well, it for today. Well, yeah, that's it for today. You got me. I don't know. <laughs> well, because when you're in a physical body, the, the all right. So let's just say you have awareness, right? And you can move your awareness. You conscious first have consciousness. Consciousness is like turning light on a room. Awareness is like the laser pointer, right? So where are you going to move that laser pointer? to the thing that catch your attention, right? The nature of being in a physical body, that's the loudest signal you're getting, right? Somebody step on your foot, ah, get your attention, right? Mm -hmm. If you're tired, it's a pretty loud signal. If you're really, really hungry, it's a loud signal, right? So the loudest signals you get are of the physical world and your physical body. So that tends to draw your attention. That simple, mm. right? So, and and really, a huge part of, I'll say, the spiritual path, although I I. I believe spiritual path is just another illusion, but let's just say a, a huge part of becoming aware of frequency and, and attempting to move frequency is um, uh, learning to turn within to subtler signals, right? And and as you turn your attention into the subtler signals, oh, you go, oh, yeah. You know, there's one thing if you're in a rage, I mean, that's a pretty strong internal signal, right? But the subtler signals of of peace, of joy, of of and then it gets even even subtler, you know, of of when you're quiet enough, feeling feeling the the movement of someone else's energy, right? Feeling the promptings from higher levels of of your own consciousness. So there's there's a whole universe that exists within you, but it's almost like a it's almost like a microscope, you know, a microscope. Uh, uh, amplifies very very small amounts of light big enough that you can see it right you can't normally see things microscopic with your eye because because your eye is not sensitive enough so it's a matter of um it's a matter of uh learning that there's a whole universe that exists as you begin to turn within and then being able to pick up subtler and subtler signals. So you begin to repair, you could say, your microscope. Mm. That at first, all you see is just big objects, right? And then and then you, as you realize, oh, they're smaller objects, and you're using your eyes, you bring in smaller objects. And then you get a microscope, somebody say, oh, they're smaller than that. And now you get your microscope out. And then microscope, there's different lenses. Well, it used to be, right? So finer and fi more and more powerful lenses to let you see smaller and smaller. So it, it's a lot like that. So the reason it's hard at first is because we're used to really, really loud signals, and you have to uh, train yourself to be to start paying attention to subtler signals, and then it's got to be important enough to you that you you pay attention to it. 
Mm -hmm. Right. And then as you do that, let's just say, let's just say in a microscope, oh, you start to see smaller things and you see uh, things under the microscope. It's like, oh my God, that's beautiful. So now you start getting drawn into looking now at the microscopic world, right? And it's your interest and attraction that now draws you to spend instead of 30 seconds looking at the microscope, maybe you spend a couple hours at the microscope. But as you find it a whole nother world that you have interest in, now maybe you become a full-time scientist. All day you're looking at the microscopic world, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, it's it's the same type of thing. You uh, you get drawn into um, different different frequencies of consciousness as you begin to feel the joy and the peace of examining them, and then you learn to uh, stay a little quieter to be able to enjoy it. Right, which means there's a certain amount of your awareness you have to pull out from the external world that's drawing your attention so you'll find as you begin to uh move along in this direction that you start keeping part of your awareness turned inward during some of the day and then during more of the day and then finally maybe during most of the day right in uh hindu religion they they talk about um uh satsanga which mm. classically understood means keeping company with good or holy people right but my understanding is true satsanga is keeping company with divinity <clears throat> keeping mm. company with divinity and that requires part of your attention to be turned inward but it's not even really an effort after a while because they are turning it inward to that peace and that joy within you so it's like yeah, that just, I just feel better when I keep part of my awareness on there, right? Mm -hmm. like anchor. And then I think as you do that and your microscope gets stronger, you're now tuning into subtler and subtler frequencies of energy, uh, but getting deriving more and more uh, reward from it. The reward is the happiness, the peace, the joy, the wisdom, the courage. Right, and it starts to, uh, uh, as, as the reality of that gets stronger and stronger for you, then the reality of the external world starts to diminish, right? So, for example, um, as you grow in your attunement to divinity and love, you start to feel more connected with other people. So, more and more. You just start to like more and more people, right? You just find, yeah, yeah. yeah, you start to like them more. And then you start to feel like, yeah, you know what? Everyone's really kind of my friend, right? So so that reality is changing rather than the world's full of jerks. Strangers. Right. Bunch of a-holes everywhere. Yeah, a bunch of a-holes everywhere. Then you start to realize, oh, you know what? People are pretty cool, pretty interesting in their own right. way. Right? And then, then after a while, you start to feel a, a kinship, a friendship. And then as you continue to expand, uh, grow in that direction, you start to feel like, right, you start to feel like everyone is part of you, family, and then finally everyone is part of you. And then finally you begin to realize everything is you and that you that that that's a part of you is not the you that you thought you were. It's the you that you are, which is God. Mm -hmm. That's that's the progression uh, but to me, it it starts, as I call the path of joy, it starts when you start to feel that peace and that increased peace, and increased happiness. That's different than when your consciousness is completely pulled out into the external world. And that peace and joy starts to turn you inward more and more and more where this whole new universe begins to open up. Mm. You, you mentioned uh, the microscope. Uh, being able to use it and uh, it seems like sometimes it feels like our microscope is broken right you know it's just so I'm so used to only paying attention to the clanging symbols and the subtle and the still it's hard for me to focus on yeah it is broken 
<laughs> Thanks. Thank you for that confirmation. Yeah, it is. It is broken. You you got to you got to pull out a rag and wipe the lenses off and oil it a little yeah. bit and start to work on it. Right. Well. Well, is the so I've been doing this simple thing and uh, of I'll even show you. It's written on my board right here. It's uh, it's uh, the the mind thinks, the body feels, the witness watches. The ego steals, I am. And if nothing else, nice. Uh, uh, if nothing else, for what it does for me is, is um, I'm just watching these things, right? I have these crazy thoughts and I just notice them I'm like, oh, that was a crazy thought. And for me, it kind of takes the weight off it or the burden or the, even the judgment of my own crazy thought. So I don't like add another crazy thought on top of my crazy thought. Yeah. And I, I kind of tap into this thing that seems like it's the watcher or the witness or that part of me that is eternal at least that isn't hooked by all my thoughts and all my emotions and is that kind of thing maybe a like a microscope kind of repair using the analogy well it's what ever starts to shift your your attention to higher frequencies i mean whatever it's like my teacher says um the only mantra he ever gave is i'm god i'm no i'm god i'm god i'm no different from god right and then I found David Icke saying the same thing in different language that I thought was great, which is I am infinite consciousness having a human experience. And, and all those are just techniques of shifting your awareness to higher frequencies. And you can tell when you do it because you feel it. You, you feel I put it in words, kind of like an expansion of consciousness or kind of an unlocking from this, this low human body uh, focus, right? So it's, it's like when I take people through the exercise into bliss, have them close their eyes, and I'll start with something like, who are you? Right? So who are you? Go ahead, let's do it now. What's that in the background? No, oh, I'm in my office. It's people oh, okay. outside. Okay. Chatting close, away. Close your eyes and close your eyes. Who are you? Who are you? That is love everywhere. Really think about that. Who are you that is love everywhere? Beyond time and space. Who are you that's love beyond time and space? Who are you that is love that has always been and will always be? Who are you that is peace in the hearts of all beings everywhere infinite ever expanding peace who are you that is bliss and so you can go ahead and open your eyes but when I take people in that, what happens is you're, you're, I'm asking questions that your conscious mind can't answer that, can't answer that. And if it's trying to answer that, I shift to the next question, keep it off balance. So what happens, the conscious mind gives up. I, I guess it's like the koan, that sound of one hand clapping, but I never, that never worked for me. So this is, this is uh, blended from a powerful hypnotic technique, which is basically, you get the conscious mind to give up, you give up, you just, you just. But it gives up to the subconscious that can answer that question as feeling. But what will happen when we're getting it right is then the subconscious will say, yeah, yeah, I can answer that. And I can answer that as a feeling. And you start to feel peace or you start to feel bliss or you start to feel expansion of your consciousness. And once that takes over, then it just 
it takes off. And usually I'll take a whole room into bliss. When I'm done, nobody wants to open their eyes. And yeah. finally, when I get them to open their eyes, I'll ask, are there any questions? And then, then there's never any questions. Because at that, as you shift your awareness to much higher levels of free, uh, frequency, there's no questions. At that, you sense the perfection of of everything. And there's there's nothing to do but be. And the be, being that you're being is your being divinity. So as David Icke would say, I am infinite consciousness having a human experience. So that almost takes your awareness up to a very high frequency. And then from that perspective, you look down at your human experience and it feels incredibly different. That's very much like shifting to the observer, right? So instead of looking out at the world, you're shifting to a high level of your beingness and looking back at your human experience. And then that feels completely different. You're looking back at it rather out from it. And that changes everything. So it's a really, really good uh, um, exercise to let you feel how easy it is to shift to very, very high frequency. Then the trick is, can you hold any of that shift throughout your day? Right? So I think one of the most positive ways to hold that shift is just shift your intention to loving service. Because loving service is high frequency consciousness. So you can still be playing your role in your day-to-day life. You're not just blissed out sitting cross-legged in the corner somewhere. But by holding the intention of loving service, you hold a piece of that high frequency and then blend it in through the your day-to-day life. And I think that's the easiest way to do it. But it's good to go through that exercise. Just because most people think, oh, you got to meditate for 10 years up in a, a cave somewhere in the mountains. No. In five minutes, you can begin to experience a, 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 a taste of who you truly are. Because you are. <laughs> it's not like you have to become that. You already are that. It's just the, 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 uh, the uh, busyness of the mind that that is putting out so much noise that you're not learning you're not used to learning how to shift your attention to that aspect of yourself which can be done in a split second once you've tasted it it's like oh that's right there it's right there it's just a shift that's all so i mean it can take you 30 years to learn to shift or 100 years or a million lifetimes to learn that shift (laughs) or you can just get a little help and you do it in five minutes and it's like oh and this is one of the things my teacher would say. He goes, the, the tragedy of the human experience is like a uh, man standing in in a river of the purest, cleanest, most delicious water and dying of thirst. <laughs> so you are bliss itself, but yet you're sitting there screaming out to the cosmos, you know, give me some peace, give me some help (laughs) Uh, but but you are you are it already you just got to learn that little tiny shift which is once you do it it's like oh that wasn't hard so then you can now just close your eyes just for a second go ahead who are you that is infinite peace everywhere and just feel that you just bring it back to your memory memory and go ahead and open your eyes. Yeah. So that's all it takes. It's now it's now you oh you now you know it's, it's that. Oh, that wasn't hard, right? So now the more you practice just shifting into that and holding on to it, and then uh go about your life and life will knock you out of it but but if you take a moment shift back in then what happens is you get knocked out less and less you can shift back faster and faster and the more you spend time in that frequency then the higher it can go and then the joy the peace of it is like oh that's pretty good so now it's it's not work to do it it's it's you know it's like sitting down to your favorite meal how hard is that yeah, I got to really do a lot of chewing for about 20 minutes. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, but it's it pays off in buckets. So that's it. And but the the world, the world, because it's so loud to your senses, your physical body, it just draws your attention back outward. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna do a short video today. I got uh, a big event happening over here, so I got to get back to it. But I really appreciate you. Well, and I would was... I would tell people, you know, if you went through that with you just there, and you start to feel it, you can then just kind of do that on your own, right? And once you feel that shift into that bliss, then quit asking yourself questions and just be, just enjoy that. <laughs> And ride that as long as you can. And then when you shift out, you shift out. But just just remember, you can pull that up back in a second. So as you go through your day, just take a moment when you're not driving, right? Just close your eyes and remember what it feels like. Just feel that deep peace. Bring it back up and then go about your business. Hold on to it as best you can. And, and it just gets easier and easier. And like I said, then you you as you hold more of it, then the next time when you go to shift, you shift a little higher. And as you, it's like climbing a mountain, you know, I mean, if you, you're at the base camp, you climb up, you know, a hundred feet. If you knock in the platoons and put a little base camp hundred feet up. Okay. So go ahead and have your dinner, go to sleep next day. Okay. Climb a little more. Well, you, you, you put in the same amount of climbing, but now you're 200 feet in the air. Knock in a base camp, go to sleep, have your meal. Right. Uh, and next day, climb another hundred feet. Right. So each day is just a hundred feet. The effort's not that much more than, but but because you're starting at a higher higher level, you're ascending the mountain. So this is this is the ladder of consciousness. You know, the the more you can just hold a slightly higher frequency towards the end of the day, then the next day it's easier to kind of pick that up and take it a little higher. I love it. Yeah, man. All right, brother. Again, thank you so much. Yeah, get to work, you slacker. <laughs> uh...